Okay, so in this follow in this follow up tutorial, we're gonna be doing this same thing as we did before. However, we're gonna do it on a Windows machine. And to be honest with you, most likely you will be doing this on Windows machines as opposed to Linux machines, primarily because even on rare occasions when Linux users for do forget their passwords. And that is quite rare, primarily because they have to type it in over and over and over again to utilize to use various things. Whereas on Windows, it is not a default feature; it can be too, it can be set up that way. But it is not by default that you need to type in your administrator password for things. Rather, instead, you can just click yes and go through it, which is a bit stupid in my opinion and the opinion of a lot of people out there. But, oh well, there, there definitely is a feature where you can enable it, but I, I really think it should be enabled by default. Anyway, uh, what I've seen people do lately is, and not lately, but they've been doing this for a while, uh, they take passwords, they take hashed passwords of Windows, and then they crack them elsewhere. Once they have cracked them, they depending on what sort of protocols have been set up on that machine, they are able to gain remote access or something of a kind. For example, in classrooms, in internet cafes, even though that you can't, you can't I mean, you cannot really access that machine from the outside world, uh, in a school facility or a corporate building or something of a kind, if you have the password of that machine, if you have the authentication credentials, if you manage to get in the same LAN, you can actually connect to that machine. Especially because you have a lot of shared folders, disks, and so on and so forth. That can be very problematic. Uh, the biggest danger of this happening is, well, you've probably heard about support guys, support people misrepresenting themselves as technical support, but really the biggest da danger are the employees themselves and sometimes irresponsible behavior and sometimes deliberate actions. Primarily, uh, as I said, in internet cafes, schools, and in corporate buildings. This can be pretty bad because I've seen people utilize like a hundred or two hundred school computers and they become their bots, basically. They control them from a central point, or as they have it these days, they have decentralized bots. And then those computers tend to do all sorts of things for them, which is really bad for that university because all tr all traces, all clues will end up inevitably pointing towards them for whatever activity that person has conducted. And that is why uh, it, it is not a good, I mean, that is why this sort of an attack is useful. You will be able to recreate the steps of the, of such people and steal the hashes and then there are various applications for those hashes, what you can do, where you can apply them, how you can utilize them. And I mean, it's beyond, I can't, I can't even possibly hope to, I can't even hope to uh, count them all here, but it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to give you a brief intro of what people actually use these hashes for on Windows machines. And they are also crackable, primarily because people for Windows, they don't put any sort of complex passwords most of the time, so they are crackable more or less. Anyway, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Open up your uh, browser. I have Internet Explorer here. I've been trying it out lately, and they have remodeled it quite well, but I still don't like it security-wise. Anyway, uh, as this is my virtual machine, I don't really have a lot of stuff installed here, so I just use the default Internet Explorer, and that's it. Anyway, uh, you need to go to this website, uh, www.openwall.com, and you can navigate to this link if you wish. If not, uh, you can immediately type in this link or you can actually navigate to it on the website. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. There aren't any problems. Anyway, uh, you need to scroll down and what you need if you're... Oops, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Come on. There we go. So it says pwdump7 and I want you to download that one. There is six, there is five, and so on and so. But you see, six is Windows 2000 XP 2003 Vista, and nothing further. 
uh, PV dump 5 is NT2000, XP, and 2003 nothing further. That is why uh, you do need PV dump 7. There is a question mark after Vista. I'm pretty sure that's like for everything that came afterwards as well. And Quarks, PV dump something. I don't know what this is. Quarks is a new open source. Okay, I guess you can download the the bottom ones as well, but it doesn't really matter. I've realized that PV dump 7 actually does work without any sort of problems of whatsoever on Windows 8.1 Ultimate without with all upgrades done. Okay, maybe not with all of them, but I, I think I didn't do my upgrades for this week or this half of the month or something like that. Anyway, it does work with Windows 8.1, so you don't have to worry about that. You just go ahead and click on download local copy of PW dump 7 uh, save as it's gonna go ahead and save it into your downloads folder go ahead and click on save I already have it do you want to replace it sure why not running security scan I wonder what sort of security scan is Internet Explorer doing has completed excellent so uh, I need a this is a zip file so I need definitely something to open it I would recommend using 7-zip but I'm 99.99% .99 sure that all of you out there have some sort of a zipping and unzipping software whether it's uh, whether it's the proprietary one or a free version like mine which is 7-zip I'm pretty sure that you all have it out there, that's why I'm not going to include it in this tutorial primarily because pretty much everybody has it. If somebody needs if somebody needs instructions on how to download and install 7-zip for unzipping files, just leave it in the discussions. I'll be more than happy to help you out there. Anyway, navigate over to your downloads folder. Uh, no, not here apparently. Ah, yeah, right. Users creator and downloads so got a lot of things here I uh, actually don't need to be here I need to open up 7-zip sorry about that let me just go ahead and find it 7-zip file manager excellent so I have opened up my 7-zip and you need to uh, find PV dump 7 and then you need to download John the Ripper as well. So just download John the Ripper 179 Windows Binaries zip and download one of the latest free free versions. But go further down below where it says download the latest community enhanced version and then download the latest one here. After that is done, uh, go back to your just click just click on that link and it will download. Go back to your extraction extraction software. I'm using 7-zip. Find the file here wherever it may be. So it's PV dump 7-zip and I need one more. I need John 179J5W.zip. Excellent. Click on extract and I don't need this folder. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my command line. And I have taken the I have taken the liberty of actually reconfiguring the command line in Windows a bit for my own needs and purposes. I kinda like it this way, so just go ahead and nav oops navigate back to your root directory. The root directory here is actually C, just the drive. Uh, unlike Linux you will notice that the commands are slightly different and I have no idea why does Microsoft actually use backslash instead of slash that is so weird I wish they would change it that would make my life so much easier anyway what I want you to do here is uh, do dir uh, for directory listing you can actually use this command in Linux as well dir and it will list them so I have created a file here I think it's called pass so uh, just type in mk dear like in Linux space pass I'm gonna name mine pass you can name this folder whatever you want uh, this folder name can be anything you can just smash the keyboard there you go and once you have the name of the folder just press enter 
to me, for me, it says a subdirectory file pass already exists, primarily because it does already exist. You can actually see it here, but doesn't matter for you, it will create it. And one more thing is necessary, I need to close this terminal, I completely forgot about this. You need to actually run as administrator on the terminal. Well, you don't need it for the creation of the folder, but you do need it for uh, what we are about to do. Anyway, we are now at the extraction port, at the extraction, select path, path will be uh, local drive C, the folder that you have created mine is pass, and just click OK, that will extract it there. That will extract both of the files there, you can see that I already have them extracted, both are already there. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this, close this, doesn't matter. If you encounter any problems with file extraction or if you need help on installing 7-zip for file extraction, you can use any other software that can unzip files, whether it's proprietary or free or open source. Well, maybe it can be proprietary and open source. In any case, if it's proprietary or free, uh, doesn't really matter as long as it can do the job feel free to do it with that software if you uh, again if you will fail to do this just post in the discussion section and I'll be more than happy to tell you how to unzip it anyway let's just go back here one more one more excellent so we are back in C let's change directory to our newly created folder do dear for listing I'm gonna have one extra folder here it's pvdump 3 v2 I just disregard that. Those are my previous attempts to see and test out versions. Will they work or not? Uh, so they don't. PV dump 7 works. Anyway, what we are about to do is actually dump the password file. So go ahead and type in, go ahead and enter PV dump. Uh, nope. PV dump 7. Excellent. So, dear, just a few files here. There is an exe file. You need the exe file. So, type in pv. I'm pretty sure that Windows is case insensitive, unlike Linux. But I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna play it safe here. And now I wish to create a file, same way as in Linux. I'm gonna name it test.txt. Press enter. Oops. What is it? Usage. Dump system passwords. Have you done that? Dear. No, you haven't. Why not? Why? What is what is the matter? Ah, okay, so here. Ah No, this is not the case. Sure this dump system passwords. Why? Why not? Come on, come on, don't do this to me. It's dump system passwords. Excellent. So it's like this. Oh, I see. I see what the problem was. Of course, of course, I need to redirect the standard output into a file. Uh, so you see a bit of a s bit of a very stupid mistake on my part there. It took away some time, but doesn't matter. I decided not to cut it out, uh, just to show you that these things can happen. And I do have a tendency not to cut out my mistakes from the tutorials, just so that you can learn from them. Although there isn't much that you can learn from this other than to see that I am that I can be rather stupid from time to time. Anyway, you do need a greater than sign in between these commands uh, because you want to dump the output of pw dump 7.exe into test.txt not.exe. If you don't do that, it's just going to print out these things out to the screen, and you can't really utilize them. They're just printed out there. It's standard output. Unless you have placed it in a file or something of a kind, it's completely useless to you. So press enter. This has happened. Dear, do I have a text.exe no fantastic I have a test.txt and if I press if I type in note uh, notepad dot tx notepad test.txt 
press enter. There we go. We have pretty much the same information that we have that has been printed out on the standard output. Anyway, we're not really interested in looking at that file too closely, but one good thing is that you can actually get the usernames, which is fantastic. So all the usernames are here and you can use them as you choose and please all you need is passwords but, but even once you have a username you can even perform a some sort of a brute force attack on an FTP or a mail server or whatever I've showed you how to do that with Hydra on a web server the procedure is pretty much the same for any other service you just type in the parameters I just change the parameters a little bit and that's it probably the most complex attack is on a web web login service uh, on websites that have login services on them everything else like attacking an FTP or an SSH or something like that is piece of cake set up with Hydra but depending on the in, depending on the password strength can take a while anyway let's just go ahead and close this file now I need to go back and go into Actually, no, I'm going to do this the other way around. PV dump 7 there, and now I'm going to need to type in back once. I'm going to go back once. That's going to go send me into pass, and then I'm going to need to go into John and John again, and dot. I need run, sorry. Oh, come on, where is it? Direct. Ah, I just missed it. Drawn dot exe. And to this, I am going to pass the file test.dxt. Excellent. So we have loaded two password hashes with no different salts. Administrator, creator. Uh, okay, so I need to actually expand this uh, could not complete first please report this problem okay so it doesn't really matter you can see everything that you need to see here CLS where and shell salts port where is it Come on, help me out here. Show. Okay. Show equal. Uh -huh. Okay. So I see. I see. I see. Of course. I need test.txt. I need dash dash show space. I need, I need to give it the file from which to read, of course. Uh, you can't just expect it to figure it out on its own. That was a bit stupid again from my part, on my part. But press enter, and there you go. Now, by default, I can't select things here, which is very annoying. I need to go into Edit and click on Mark, and now I can select things. Amazing system. Anyway, it says Administrator, no password. Creator, test. So, I have a password for my user creator. It's test. I have found it, and now I can use it for all sorts of generally wrong things. Uh, what you can use them for and how to actually compromise how to attempt to compromise systems and what you can actually do uh, how you can exploit them should I say we will explore upon that further in the chapter on Metasploit and reverse shells but for the time being I just want to show you how you can acquire these passwords how you can crack them and later on we will actually utilize them but this is a very useful skill to have to figure out how to get these passwords anyway i bid you all farewell and i hope to see you in the in the next tutorial